Did you ever have that one doll that you thought was the most beautiful doll ever? Peaches and Cream Barbie was that doll for me. Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany. Join me today while I not only take on the big task of recreating this beloved doll, but also my very first Barbie repaint. I'm super excited, so let's get started. For my base doll, I've chosen this Barbie from the Signature Looks line. I really liked her face sculpt and I thought I could work with it to get the perfect balance between sophistication and sweetness. Once I have her out of the box and stripped down, I begin with the unfortunate task of shaving off her hair. The hair was absolutely beautiful, but it didn't exactly fit with my vision. I plop her down into a cup of boiled water and let the vinyl get nice and squishy so I can easily remove the head. With the head removed, I use my flathead screwdriver to scrape out all of those plugs. Luckily, these new Barbies don't use glue in the head, so no gluey mess to deal with. I then use my needle nose pliers to remove all the hair from inside the head. With a bit of acetone, I can remove all of her factory paint. I get started rerouting her in a combination of peachy blonde and champagne. I would normally paint the scalp to match the hair, but the hair was so close to the scalp color as it was, I just didn't bother to do it. I didn't forget to do it. I really love the final results of these two colors together, but now that the reroute's done, I need to secure those plugs in place. So I take a bit of liquid fusion glue and squirt it down into the head, and then with the tip of a paintbrush, I rub it all around, making sure that I'm touching all of those plugs. Now I can tackle that voluminous dress. With this being my very first Barbie repaint ever, it means I have no patterns, so I need to make one. I wrap the doll up in saran wrap, and then I begin covering that with painter's tape. This gives me a surface to draw on so that I can sketch out the shape of my bodice. I make sure that I mark out the side seams as well as the center front and center back. This gives me points of reference as well as places to cut away at. When cutting this off, be extra careful so you're not scratching up your doll. I begin cutting out all the pattern pieces and applying darts where needed. Originally, I put a dart here at her chest but figured out through some trial and error that it wound up needing a full princess seam, so you'll see the pattern change a little bit later on. I sketch these onto a piece of paper and add seam allowance. Now I have all of my pattern pieces cut out and I'm going to get them sewed together. I match up all of my seams and I sew them with right sides together. And voila! A finished bodice! I can now hem that top edge and get it cleaned up a bit. If you ever wonder why it takes me so long to create dolls, it's because I'm my own worst enemy. Here are my revisions for my bodice. We have revision number one. It was a bit ill-fitting, but I used the pattern of this to create number two. Number two, I realized that I actually needed a full princess seam on this, so I used this one to create pattern number three. With number three, I was unhappy with the way the top looks, so I decided to do another draft, and here's number four. But I got to thinking that maybe it was the lining on number three, so I remade it again with no lining, but I still didn't like it, and went back with number four. With the bodice made, I'm going to get started on the bottom portion of her dress, and to do this, I need to make a circle skirt. And I'm going to show you really quickly how to make your own circle skirt pattern. It's a very simple formula where the radius equals the circumference divided by 2 times pi. Our circumference, which is the measurement for the bottom of the bodice, is 10.5 centimeters, and we're going to divide that by 2 times pi, which is 6.28, and it leaves us with 1.67, which I'm going to round up to 1.7. I measure out 1.7 centimeters from the corner of of my sheet of paper on both sides and then I create a little quarter sphere. I would follow that up with another circle down at the bottom for whatever length you want the dress. And when cutting out the fabric you're going to fold it half and in half again to create that full circle. I'm going to start on something now that may seem a bit odd but the original Peaches and Cream Barbie actually had these underskirts that were orange and even in the ruffle itself there was an orange underlayer. I'm going to be taking my fabric and I'm folding it in half and trapping a piece of orange tulle in the middle of it to give it that same effect. Once I have all of that orange tool encased in my other fabric, I'm going to baste it down so it doesn't shift around. Next, I get started on the ruffle. 16 and a half feet of fabric ruffled down to 9 and a half feet, which sounds like a really bad thing to do by hand, but luckily I have a ruffling foot. This thing is a game changer because I would have been crying right now. I'll leave a link for this because the $7 was definitely worth my sanity. With a bit of magic, I'm now going to attach that ruffle to the bottom of my circle skirt. I really love how this top layer turned out. It's just so poofy and pretty. I take my four skirt layers and I baste around the top. This is going to help hold them in place while I'm attaching them to the bottom of my bodice. I finish the dress off by sewing up the back of the skirts and attaching a bit of Velcro. I am so in love with this dress. 
I'll admit this one has an extra layer the original didn't have, but I wanted that extra poof. Now for her stole, and this is where I decided to really deviate from the design. I never was a fan of the fabric stole, so I used this opportunity to give her the perfect faux fur fluff. I fold my piece in half and sew this with right sides facing. I leave an opening in the middle so that I'm still able to flip this right sides out. Once it's right sides out, I can use a ladder stitch to close that up. I happened to find these beads in my stash that were the perfect shade for her jewelry. I string these onto some jewelry thread and once they're the right length, I tie them off. I use a bit of glue to secure the knot. For her earrings, I took four crystals and slid them on the hairpin, then bent them perpendicular and cut off the excess. These will slide right into the Barbie's pierced ears. Now for the part that I've been dreading and putting off because I don't know if I can do this. Oh my god, those eyes are so tiny. What was I thinking? The face up. Here are all the supplies that I've used on her face up. Various watercolor pencils, pastels, and a bit of mica powder. As always, a full list of my supplies is available in the description box if you're curious. I prepped the doll by giving her three coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat. I let each coat dry at least 30 minutes before applying the next coat. Unfortunately, MSC can be very temperamental. You need to shake the can thoroughly and also warm the can up a bit in your hands before you spray. When you're spraying, you need to make sure to hold your doll head 8 to 10 inches away from the can and to spray in short burst. The first thing I tackled was the eye shape because for me, this was a make it or break it moment and if I couldn't pull off just the eye shape, the whole project would be down the drain. Once I was happy with the eye shape, I put down a coat of Colorless Blender and began doing some shading. I fully expected this project to be a lot harder for me to do as a face up because these eyes really are so much smaller than I'm used to working on with the Monster High and Never After High dolls. However, I think because I chose a doll with such strong facial moldings, it helped me jump that hurdle. Something I've been trying to do with my repaints is pulling in blues, yellows, and reds to different portions of the face to give the skin some texture and dimension. I really only have a handful of dolls that stood out to me from when I was a kid. I feel like most of them just landed in the generic Barbie category of I'm just a blonde doll and that was all they were. There was nothing special to stand out. But I have a few that I really remember. Peaches and Cream Barbie, of course, because she came with a fancy dress and I wanted a fancy dress and a reason to wear it. Who am I kidding? I'm an adult and I still play with dolls and want a place to wear fancy dresses. Not much has changed. The two other dolls I can distinctly remember was Totally Hair Barbie and Tropical Miko. Totally Hair Barbie had that really cool mini dress and the super long hair that was so fun to style, but Tropical Miko stood out to me because even after her leg got broken off in a freak kindergarten accident, I still played with her. I just gave her a backstory about why she didn't have a leg. What about you guys? What are some of your favorite dolls or toys from when you were a kid? Here we are back on the face up and on layer two, it's pretty much the moment of truth. We've gotten the eyes shaped down, but I haven't got an iris in place. And in the end, all of my worrying was for naught because the irises wound up being easier to draw in than the eye shape themselves. Overall, I wanted her makeup to feel very soft, so no overpowering blush or lipstick colors. I even wanted her eyeshadow to be more natural shading with just small hints of color. With a light blue watercolor pencil, I begin to add in some veining around her face to the areas that would naturally have thinner skin. This is something I had seen Jackie O do in the past and I really like the effect it gave her dolls, so it's something I've been trying to do more. After that, I seal her and I get started on layer three. Layer three is mostly just building up more colors and adding a few more details. I wanted to say a quick thank you to all my Patreon members. Angel Book Walter, B. Burnett, Deborah Sweeney, Stephanie L, Angelica, Dollicious, Sophie, Amber S, Bex Mini Studio, Camille, Kitsy, Oak Magpie, Thury. It means so much to share my work with such a great community. If you're interested in becoming a supporter, please check out the link down below. I have an upcoming Patreon only collab in April where I will be sharing their witch themed dolls on my collab video as well as my social media. On the final layer, I add in her catch lights and highlights to her waterline and give her one final dusting of mica powder. I seal her with three coats of Mr. Super Clear just to protect all of my work. Now let's get to styling that hair. I released her hair from its protective wrap and I gave it a dunk in some water just to wet it. This makes the hair a bit easier to manage and separate. 
I take my section of hair and apply a bit of blue masking tape down at the very tips of it. This allows me to wrap the hair completely around the roller without the little ends sticking out and not curling. Once I have all of the curlers in place, I pour boiling water on top of the doll. Now, if I sealed her correctly, the face up's safe. When her hair has had a chance to completely dry, I'm going to pull the curlers out. I fiddle with her hair a bit to get it looking how I'd like it. I separate out some of the larger curls into smaller pieces, and I form some of the curls back together that got a little messy. I finished off the hairstyle by pulling a small section of the hair from the front off to the side and tying it off with a rubber band. And now for the final reveal. And you'll remember, this is where we started, and this is where we ended up. I'm pretty stinking happy with how she turned out, and she definitely would have set my childhood heart aflutter. You can count on seeing a few more Barbie repaints in the future, because I did have a lot of fun. At the time this video goes live, Peaches and Cream Barbie will be available for purchase on my Etsy shop, so if you're interested in adopting her, please check out the link down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I wanted to say thanks for watching. And remember, always be creating.